Hey guys, uh, today we're going to be talking about a subject I've been wanting to talk about for a while, um, kind of a long time coming, but it's all the changes and stuff and additions um, that I would make to Castle Magic. Uh, King Salah has talked to me before about this kind of stuff. Um, I think around the time I actually started my first video, they had actually talked to me on a forum post uh, about this same subject, but I just wanted to shed some further light on it and... Uh, get y'all's opinions as well, like get you guys in the conversation. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about is all of the, um, the, the biggest and easiest changes that they could make. Um, and that really has to do a lot with the effect spells. Um, effect spells, if you don't know, are the, um, the the like the spells that you can cast in the actual game itself uh they are the the ones that are going to be most recognizable to a lot of wizards um there's also i think in effect spells there's like camera shakes yeah you can you can shake the camera for an amount of time um and they've also got like sounds or um other like other various things like that so it's it's all of the non-interactable kind of spells basically like the the stuff that's going to make happen um and anyway so the the first ones i want to talk about here are the uh the spells that kind of don't completely function like they do in the pve sense like um all all of these spells that i've got here are going to be missing their background um, that they would normally have in in a normal setting um unfortunately they haven't seen much change since they've been released um i don't know if there's any plans on fixing it but i just thought i would bring it to y'all's attention um and i want to preface this by saying not all of this is a bad thing um a lot of times like with athena for instance her first spell you'll get this like kind of halo -y effect and this can be really cool for a lot of reasons like the flexibility is here to where you don't have to put this in a zone that necessarily would benefit from uh the blue background that she normally has right so like if i wanted to put uh, the Athena spell in, say, a graveyard setting or like a spooky setting, the blue sky from the normal spell wouldn't really work in that setting, so it's kind of cool that it's not there. Um, unfortunately, it does also kind of mess with how the spell, like people think the spell should look, um, and you kind of miss a little bit of the flavor. Uh, and you'll see that more with a few of the other spells, uh, but I'll get more on that topic a little later. Uh, the next one I want to take a look at is Call of Krulu. Now, I love this spell. It's definitely by far one of my favorite death spells. I think Kismas Curse might be a little higher just because I like cats, but uh, this one's pretty cool too. So you got the big spiral and then he comes out. Super fun. Um, but yeah, you'll notice normally this has a really cool kind of feel to it, um, and that doesn't really exist anymore, which kind of sucks um but just another thing to kind of keep in mind uh when talking about all this these these changes and stuff these are just i would like to see backgrounds added to these spells oh whoops um so that they look more like the normal versions uh the next one we got here is lightning bugs uh, right and this one has a weird mish mash kind of thing of what we were talking about like it's got the trees from the background, if I play it again. It's got the trees from the background that it normally would have, but it doesn't have the rest of the swamp, which I feel like is kind of a shame, honestly, because this is a super cool spell. I've always liked lightning bugs, but... Anyway, so let's move on to the next one. Um, up next, we have... Uh, Headless Horseman. This is also a really cool spell. Unfortunately, they cut off like the beginning of this spell, which kind of sucks, um, but he's still really neat. I would like to see the, uh, the the thing that he rides through, the like, bridge bit, 
that he rides through. Also, the sound on that just lasts way longer than the actual spell does. Um, we'll just take a look at that one. Uh, yeah, so it's missing the background. It's kind of got it there, which is cool, but it's also missing the thing he rides through. Um, and I'd like to see that maybe changed in the future if possible. Um, next up, we have... Uh, Orthos. Now, Orthos, as some of y'all might know if you've been paying attention to the test room and stuff, is actually getting an update to what he does. He's becoming an AoE spell, which is really good for Myth Wizards. It's going to make me really want to level up mine. Um, <laughs> I messed that up. Um, what I meant to say, apparently, is a Snowball Barrage. Um, and th yeah, this one's also missing, missing its, its background. Um, which is a shame because I actually really like the background of this. It's a nice soft blue texture um, and stuff. But yeah, so <laughs> uh, moving on. The the next one is um, Wings of Fate. Uh, I think that's what it's called. Let me just double check. Yeah, Wings of Fate. The, the life, the Shadow Life spell. So you'll see again. This one is actually missing. Not only the um, the background, but it's also missing the really cool, uh, the moon that's normally behind this spell, and I love that part of it. It's a shame they couldn't add it, but yeah, uh, that, that's just another one. Um, the next two are mostly fine, uh, like they've got backgrounds and stuff. It's Orthos and, um, Winged Sorrow, um, but they are missing, like, Winged of Fate, the moon, and the moon is just such a cool flavor, um, to these spells, but... I mean, they don't look bad. Like, Orthos still looks pretty cool. I very much love this spell. It's always been a favorite um, ever since it was released. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's missing the cool moon that's behind it. Or the creepy moon, however you want to put it. Uh, but I do like him. It's just a shame that it doesn't show up normally. Uh, and the very last one we got here is Wing Sorrow. Um, and yeah, she doesn't have the moon, which is a real shame for this spell because it just looks so cool and that moon really adds a lot of flavor to it um but yeah so that is all of the the spells that have something very small um changed to them uh that make it not really mesh with what i would kind of like to see the spells as uh, just basically the pve versions of the spells um the next couple things I'd like to go over are spells that are actually just kind of broken. Like, they're missing a significant chunk of what they need um, to look decent. Um, so the first one is Chimera. Uh, and you'll notice with this one, whenever I play it, is that there's a, a texture bit, right? So normally, you see the spell from this angle, and it looks fine. However, you'll see the dirt and stuff... It just completely it, it clips over um, the actual stuff, which is really unfortunate because this is also a really cool spell. Um, but yeah, that's definitely something. These are the like kind of more important ones to fix. The ones over here were like they look all right, but it would look better if they had the background. These are just straight up. These spells are broken, um, and and they probably need to be fixed if they want to see any fun uses. Um, but yeah, so the next one is going to be Gaze of Fate, and this is such a shame because I love the spell Gaze of Fate. Um, but you'll notice that his tomb is missing and his background is missing, and that just, that's not fun, you know? He comes out, admittedly, you could kind of do some cool stuff with that, where like, he comes out of a housing item or something, but like... Uh, the tomb is just so fun, and it really adds a lot to this, and the background would add even more, and it's a shame that neither of those are there, so I just wanted to bring that up. Um, the last two is uh, Handsome Fomori. I don't know if I... I probably butchered that, but that is, um, for those of y'all who don't know, is the ice spell. Um, he, he comes up, he's got the, the snowy pines and stuff. This is just straight up not the spell <laughs> like there's a myth version of this spell that comes on a pet um i don't remember what it's called or if it's called anything different but it's just straight up not this right like this is the myth version um 
which like oops but also i wouldn't mind seeing this version just as it's standalone thing obviously um but yeah that's that one and then the last one this this is so upsetting um queen calypso the really cool storm spell um released a while back i think as like a wand i don't know if you can straight up get her anywhere you probably can get her i don't know but queen calypso has always been a really cool spell she's actually fun fact the longest castle magic spell like effect spell and i think spell in the game that hits one target she, like she's got the longest animation which is such a shame because she doesn't have the water that's in the spell normally and she doesn't have the background so it's kind of like just a lot going wrong at the same time i'm not sure what the decision behind this was other than that you could put this on your own water if you really wanted to but like we didn't even have the advanced movement options until recently so i i don't know but here's what she looks like now she's still such a cool spell i love her but yeah without water this just looks so weird and without the background it looks even more weird so yeah, I definitely like to see this changed. Um, but those are all the the current spells I'm going to talk about that that need any real changes. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is actually spells that I'd like to see put in, like castle magic spells, castle magic effect spells that I would like to see put into the game. Um, and those would be all the mirage and scion spells. Um, because those are really cool. I love Sandworm. I love Kizma's Curse. They're just really cool spells in general. And I'd like to maybe see... Um, well, I'll, I'll get into that later. But I, I, I would like to see both of those kinds of spells. Um, and I'd love to see both versions of every Scion spell. Like the, the two times version and the, the normal version. Because if you don't know, those actually are completely separate animations. Um, it's really cool. Um, the other thing I'd like to see is the Morgant spell. Um, it's a hit-all for, I think, four pips. It's pretty good, especially if you're a life wizard. I've been using that a ton on my life wizard. That's how I do a lot of my farming nowadays, um, which will get even better because Forest Lord is a seven-pip spell in the the player test server. But anyways, so yeah, I'd like to see Morgant. I would love to see the rest of the Aquila spells. Um, so like Athena was the one of the Aquila spells and the only Aquila spell they unfortunately have um, from what I've seen. Um, but you've also got like Zeus or Poseidon or Hades um, and all, all of those. I would just love to see all of those put into the game. Um, as well as the other pack spells, like we just recently got the, the Ratatasker thing. Um, like the the Norse Norse themed spells, uh, I think Myth got like a heal in those, and like a bunch of other stuff. Um, we've got the majority of them so far, but we are missing some that I'd really love to see. Um, and then the very last spell I'd like to see is Dimension Shift. It's a uh, I think the level 78, 74 Myth spell that just switches all of your your stuff with a minion, um, like your blades and and shields and whatnot. Uh, which is a really fun idea for a spell. I don't think anyone ever really uses it. Um, but I think it'd be a lot of fun to, like, having castle magic. Just, like, this dark energy, like, sucking uh, stuff away from the character. It's just, it's a cool idea, and I think there could be a lot of fun things to do with that. Um, so those are the effect spells I want to talk about. Um, just to recap, we've got these four spells just completely broken um they they need to be sorely looked after um unfortunately and then all of these are just basically missing a background um headless horseman missing a little bit more than a background because he doesn't have the thing that he rides in on at the beginning but i think where they started the spell is kind of okay to compensate for that um and then a couple of them are missing the moon so i don't know just some fun things to kind of think about um in terms of additions and stuff and then just basically catching up on all of the all of the spells we don't already have including like um the the socket spells and stuff so yeah so that's that's those um the next thing i want to talk about and this one's kind of really important to me is um some mechanics and stuff that i'd like to see added to castle magic um and this doesn't mean 
I'll, t I'll talk about spells, like useful spells I'd like to see added into the Castle Magic system, but this is just straight up mechanics that I would like to see, right? So the, the most important one is I would love to have some better documentation on uh, some of the spells. Uh, if you've watched my videos before, you know I've done a, a Castle Magic tutorial um, that goes over a lot of the spells. That's because we don't really have that much in the game to go over the, some of the more confusing spells. Um, we've got the... I was just coming over here to see if I had it. I don't think I do. Um, the Castle Magic Help Book, and that's pretty useful um, for the actual items themselves. You can learn a lot of info from that, but it doesn't really have that much information on the spells and what they do. Like, the most we get is what it says on here, right? And sometimes this is descriptive, but then you get into spells like... Um, solidify movement and unsolidify movement and these i literally had to go onto a forum post um on the wizard 101 site to find out what they did because someone was having trouble with them it turns out solidify and unsolidify make an object not move through walls basically so if i had a, a spell that was moving say this tent um like across the map or whatever it would stop if it hit this rock or this barn or like the house itself like it wouldn't go through if the unsolid or the solidify movement was placed on that object and stuff and unsolidify does the exact opposite right so it'll go through actual objects and whatnot and it's just it's kind of a shame that we don't get more description um on a lot of this stuff or at least a book that will kind of overview um some of the stuff so that's that's one thing i would love to see is better documentation on the actual spells themselves um another thing i would love to see is a um an ability to preview the area of effect of items uh right so if i'm using the um player room detector i think is what it's called or magic player is it the magic player detector let me just double check real quick no, no. Um, I think it's the player room detector or, or magic room detector or something like that, right? So it's like, if your wizard steps into this area of effect, activate, right? But you never get to see the actual activation range, um, even if you've got the item pulled up, which kind of sucks. I'd love to see it where, like, if I clicked on it like this, right, it would show me kind of a circle of where it would activate based on its current um, area of effect size because uh, you can tweak that in the options of the actual item uh, which is really nice but you don't get to know that sort of thing um, and I'd like to see this for like item detectors as well um, basically all the detectors I'd love to see a preview around the actual object I think that'd be super helpful um, another thing I would love to see is um, if you're a programmer right, you'll know what I'm saying when I say this, is float-based timing, right? So there's a difference between a float and an integer um, in programming and stuff. So like a float would be, uh, or an integer would be um, like 10, right? Like it's a whole number, you don't have any decimal points. I would love to be able to put a dot at the end of this, uh, 10, and put in like two decimal places sometimes. Um, it would really help with timings and stuff. I'd love to see that capability added um, to a number of objects uh, and options kind of thing. And I'll get more into the options in just a second. But I would just really like to see the ability to put decimal points in our, our timers and our, our numbers that we can type in, right? So that's just something that's kind of been on my mind. Um, the other big mechanic, and this is a big mechanic um, that I would love to see added, uh, a lot like the advanced placement system. I'm sure that took a ton of time for King Sal to create. But this is something that's also, I think, really important and could really elevate what we can do with Castle Magic in a huge way. Um, so what I'm proposing is a, uh, a spell options tab that's in every every item that you can put a spell into, right? So you'll notice the magic timer has this magic item options. I want a magic spell options right here, 
right? And so, so what would that do um, for us? So basically, if I put in, say, an effect spell like King Artorius, right? Um, there'd be a grayed out menu whenever this isn't in, right? Whenever an effect spell isn't in, or uh, whenever an action spell is in, and stuff like that. This, there would be another grayed out tab here. As soon as you put a spell in, you that tab would become available, and the options that you would get on each spell would be different depending on what the spell is, right? So effect spells could have, say, a size, um, a type associated with it, right? So, like, if I wanted to make the Forest Lord spell, like, right, like, really tiny, I could do that. Um, I think that'd be really... I don't know how easy it would be um, on King Style part. I think because their spells, from what I've talked to them, um, don't even have that option integrated into them, uh, which kind of sucks, meaning that the the size of spells and stuff wouldn't really be available. Um, but there are other things that could be in this options tab, right? So like the background, whether I w whether or not I want it on or off, right? So we've already seen that that's possible back here like due to the due to say uh, w uh wings of fate right normally there's a background around here but there's not right so they have the animation obviously made with this spell not having a background right and in pve they've got the other half of that spell where it actually does the healing so you could have it play certain hits as well or how far basically how far the spell goes so like if i wanted to just play the attack part of this animation i'd have an option to do that and i'd also have an option to, for it to continue and do the healing side as well um so yeah so the, those last two things i said the the background i'd love to be able to turn that on or off that'd be really cool um really useful for a lot of projects um and then how far the spell basically goes so say minotaur i only want the first hit to happen or if i want both hits to happen i'd be able to do that but i wouldn't be able to do just the second hit you know something like that basically um i just love to have a full animation play out if i wanted or stop at a certain animation like but only certain spells would have that obviously right so like I wouldn't be able to do that with, say, Winged Sorrow, because Winged Sorrow doesn't have a second hit to it. It just puts, uh, what, like an enfeeble, or like a, or not enfeeble, like a weakness, basically, uh, an infectious plague. Whatever. It does that. Um, but that doesn't have its own animation. So only stuff like Minotaur, or Wings of Fate, or any of the swap spells, like Dr. Vaughn's, or Wraith, or stuff like that, those would be able to, we'd be able to do those as well. Um, and I just feel like that's kind of, an important idea to kind of express, like just being able to do that sort of thing. Um, another thing I would love to see in terms of effect spell options, right, would be the ability to uh, change the animation. Um, so for the Scions, for instance, you have two versions of the same animation, right, depending on the conditions that you've met. Well, what if in the spell options you got to choose which one of those you wanted? instead of making two separate cards. Um, I just thought that would be kind of cool, but you've also got you know, some of the earlier spells like Fire Elf or Fire Cat. Um, those both have, those are examples of animations, or of spells with different animations in the same spell. So it'd be nice to be able to choose the alternate animations um, as well in this kind of effects tab, or this, this options tab. Um, in terms of like camera spells that could like camera options or um options of camera spells right you could uh change like the duration right so like if i had a pan left i could slow that down or speed that up depending on a number that i input kind of like here which would be really useful if the decimal thing was also part of that right so i could very specifically time out how long i want this to last um, and I think that'd be really useful for cutscenes and stuff. Uh, the other thing you could do is like a reverse option. So like kind of like how we can click or unclick repeat. You could click or unclick reverse as well. And that would basically play the animation in reverse. Um, so if I did a pan left, 
it would go from the center out to the left, right? But if I did a reverse pan left, it'd go from the outside into the center. Um, and I just I, I figured that would be kind of fun, and it would definitely save on the the hassle of making even more cards that you'd have to buy because you would just have that option right here, right? Um, one other camera kind of related um, option I'd love to see uh, for camera sp uh, camera spells is the ability to smooth out your camera, right? Um, so if uh, in a previous video of mine. I had talked about how you needed this many units in between your your objects that you were putting the camera spell on, right? And that's tedious as heck, right? Like that's really tough to kind of put out. So instead of having to remember that, right, you could do a smooth option where you could go from either camera to camera or from your normal camera to a camera spell. And it would basically just slide the camera in the most efficient way it possibly could to where that, that camera is supposed to start and then play the animation, right? So like if I wanted a pan left across this door, right? And I was just sitting here, you activate the door. It would basically say, this is your camera. It would do like uh, this sort of thing and then start the camera animation. Um, I hope that kind of made sense. It, it's basically the ability to smooth out um, a camera motion from, if you click it, sorry, I'm having a hard time explaining this kind of myself. I'm confusing myself is what I'm doing. So take um, a camera spell, right? In a, let's get a reflector. Yeah, this will work. So if I put a camera spell into here, right? I do that one, and then I do that one. If I selected up here in the options thing um, to have this one be, or have this second one be smooth, if I just changed it to that, yeah, okay. So we go from close up to pan right. If I did the smooth option on here, right, on this pan right, it would go from wherever the camera was here to wherever it should start from here in a very smooth manner instead of jumping um, like it can sometimes do. Uh, but if I had it on the first one, like if there was, if this first one was gone and the second one was the first camera spell in the queue basically, and I put the smooth option on, it would go from my, my player camera, this camera right here, to and disconnect to go to the starting position of this but it would do so in a, in a much smoother fashion right so th that could be really useful for a lot of stuff um i know that was kind of a very long-winded explanation for what i'm trying to, to trying to say here but i hope that kind of came across um if not i can answer your questions about it in the comments um but that's the the big thing here is i i, I just want to have the ability to change various things about each castle magic spell without having to buy another card um, via that that options menu that would just appear right here. Um, so that's the mechanics section down. Um, I hope that made sense, but if not, I'll try something different. I don't know, but but I I hope that made sense to y'all. Um, and the last thing I really want to talk about, right, is the uh, the additions, like the the functional additions that I would add to Castle Magic, and these would be just straight up new spells that you could add. Um, and I think they're they're kind of important too. Uh, so the first thing I would do is um, add. This is this is such a simple one. I say it's simple. It might actually be really tough. But there's a spell that I don't have on me that disables the PvP circle, which is a super cool spell. I love that spell. Um, it can be really useful, especially on certain houses where you do have a dueling circle, but you don't want PV people PvPing in your house. Um, you'd essentially be able to 
disable that, right? But there's no enable PvP circle <laughs> um, spell, like at all. You can just disable it. You can't, as soon as that's done, there's no way to re-enable it until you go back into the house. Um, I've tried for a while now, just trying to figure that out. It doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't work until you reload the house, and that can just be such a detriment to certain builds um, that you've done. So I'd love to see an enable PvP circle. Um, the next big one that I'm kind of thinking about is uh, breadcrumb spells. So basically, um, in another video that I did, we had we had this cutscene over here, right? Um, and the scarecrow basically cast um, uh, it cast earthquake on this tree and made it fall over, and that was the whole animation. I can just play it right here, actually. So we we had this animation, and unfortunately, because there's no way to basically activate a breadcrumb, I couldn't get the scarecrow to do an attack animation. Um, not in time with the spell, which really kind of stinks. Um, but yeah, I, I would just really love to be able to see an ability to mess with breadcrumbs in ways we haven't been able to before. So like, I would love to see a spell that activates or deactivates a breadcrumb, right? So if I had this one um, and I wanted the, the behavior of this to be, um, I think it's bored or happy. One of the two is his casting animation. If you activated it, he would do that animation, right? Or he wouldn't go to the breadcrumb until it was activated, sort of thing. Um, and I just feel like that would be a really useful uh, sort of spell set. Um, you could also have uh, basically the emotions on the breadcrumb, like how we can how we can change his behavior um, to like normal, happy, sad, all that sort of stuff. If we could do that with a castle magic spell instead of having to use a breadcrumb, I think that could be really useful too and would make a lot of really interesting um, things. Like you could do jump scares with some of the death animations of, uh, of mobs and stuff. Like I think, what is it, Banshee? like can fall down or is it i think it's ghoul actually falls down through the floor but if you use this animation he, he, it stays right so like you get a ghoul just hanging and i've seen that put to really cool effect but it'd be even cooler to be able to do that on command instead of just having them be there um so yeah it's just some some breadcrumb spells i think would be really useful uh another big thing i would love to see uh in this game is uh the ability to do dialogue like have a dialogue item or a dialogue spell uh that would act a lot like the um uh what is it the housing i think it's a sign like the signs um uh furniture let's see sorry give me just one second i'll find them Yeah, the, these customizable signs. I would basically like an item that function like these. So this is basically menu chat um, sort of selection, but there's a bunch of options. I'd like to see that for dialogue and stuff. So like have a dialogue for like questing as a thing or Castle Magic specific dialogue. So like press this button and then you could like press next down at the bottom or it would disappear after a certain amount of time. You could change that with the spell options. Um, or with the actual item options if you're going to do it as a, a castle magic item, which I think is probably the correct approach to that, like have a, a dialogue uh, activator, kind of like we have the activate magic reflector, do activate magic dialogue or magic text sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I, I would love to see a dialogue system put into the game. Um, if you guys have... Uh, cool dialogue options that you'd love to see in your houses or love to be able to use go ahead and put them down in the comments I'd love to see what y'all think um, It'd be kind of tough uh, Just to get kind of a broad scope of things, but it can be added to just like um, 
just like the signs and just just like menu chat and stuff it'd be really useful though it, it could definitely add a nice story element um to a lot of a lot of people's builds and whatnot um and then the very last thing and this i think is even more important than the dialogue um this is something i've been wanting to see in the game for a long 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 time uh ever since castle magic was kind of brought about and i started really delving into it i've wanted this i would love to see either a spell or an item that allows the furniture and castle magic that is in your house to be client side only uh some of y'all might not know what client side is um that's basically whenever something goes on that only you can see um so in a game like in this game actually there's plenty of examples of this right so if you've ever been to uh a part in the game where you're noticing people going over this obstacle that's blocking off the rest of the map for you. Um, there's a lot of these in Winter Tusk, right? Um, and you don't get the ability to cross that section of the map until you've completed a certain quest. That's a client side barrier, basically, right? So it's only a barrier that's activated or that is seen and and felt by your character because you haven't completed a certain part of the thing. Um, I want to see that in Castle Magic, right? So if I press this button, or if I do something in the house, only I would be able to see this playing out. Nobody else in the house would be able to see this. Like, the Scarecrow wouldn't pop up, Earthquake wouldn't appear, this wouldn't even change. Like, this whole thing would not happen to somebody until they press the button themselves. Like, I would not be able to influence what they see in the house. Um... I would love to be able to see that put into this game because that would be super helpful for a lot of people who are trying to do like adventure maps or puzzles or stuff like that. If you have too many people in a house, that can completely ruin a puzzle, right? Especially if they are not all at the same stage of where they are or where you are. Um, yeah, that that's something I would love to see. I know they've done it plenty of times in the past. As I said, um, there's a bunch of parts and worlds that are coded to be like that. There are cutscenes that are coded to be like that, like the end of the Malister fight um, in the first arc. That's coded to be basically like that, right? Like, you don't get to see what happens until you get to that part of the dialogue. Like, your friends can't spoil the ending for you, sort of thing. Um, yeah, they, that's, that's the majority of what I'd love to see um, added to the game the the big thing is that client side castle magic i think that'd be really cool and then all of the effect spells and the spell options would be even cooler um another really tiny tiny thing i would love to see put into the game and this is probably one of the easiest besides the effect spell stuff um is a couple more camera options like camera spell options like right now we've got um Oh, what do we have? So we have like pan right, pan left, close up, zoom in, zoom down, zoom away, zoom toward, like all that stuff. I would love to see an orbit camera. So like a camera that goes like this around an object, right? So it would be a straight up orbit. If they don't want to do the spell options thing that I was talking about, um, then I would suggest maybe 90 degree orbits as well so like you get you can get certain camera angles that would be really nice um i would also really like to see a spiral so basically goes down like that um except it would it would it'd be it basically be an orbit except it also moves down or up at the same time um that would be really cool and i think that's about it in terms of what i would add um, I know this video is kind of long. I really appreciate y'all if you if you stuck around for it. Um, but I'll catch y'all in the next video. I think next time I'm going to be going over uh, the work I've done on my balance house um, and some updates to the to the Watchtower adventure that I've been doing. Uh, but until then, I hope y'all have a good rest of your day. Bye bye.